in the beginning, there was no hi-hat then. And basically, the patterns all happened on the snare drum and the bass drum. Uh, my favorite guy from that period is Baby Dodds. And you can hear him on the uh, Louis Armstrong records, the Hot Five, Hot Seven. And basically, I... Cowbell now. So that's kind of baby Dodds. Papa Joe Jones then brought it out with a hi hat where he could, you know. And he was the first guy where you could also maybe jab the hi-hat started straying away from taking care of the time. So it could be, you could accent with a snare, but you could also accent with a hi-hat, so. It's also the first guy to play like with his hands, like. You'll notice the same pattern I was doing with my hands. I just do the same thing with my brushes. So, again, the hi hat can answer on tool four like this, or it can jab. And then Max Roach comes along. You can hear it. See, he starts playing melodies. Elvin, everything is an accessory to the ride cymbal and the time. And even the ride cymbal itself lifts off in such an interesting way. So it's like... So that's it, there. Try and count through it or watch my feet. You'll see the time somewhere in my mouth. But everything's kind of lifting off and just creating a big stir of, of swirliness, you know? By the way, in between Max and Elvin is a guy named Art Blakey. He's like a bonum of jazz, and he's a great guy to get into. Whereas with Elvin, the hi-hat sits inside of the ride pattern. With Art, it was all business. You can tell he's just hammering. Instead of tie up to tie up, it was a tighter rhythm he would frequently use. 
for a fill, it'd be like just a huge press roll like this. kind of a Ginger Baker thing, too. Uh, stark toms played with great authority and patience. Um, the essence of then Tony is massive testosterone also. He is so running the train. And he would frequently start putting the hi-hat on quarter notes. The whole thing's just a churning thing. <laughs> 